Tim Bradley. I write a blog called Under the Castor Oil Tree. And I'm going to read you some of the entries from last week. The first one is called In Normal Times. In Normal Times, this was on Monday, May the 11th. In Normal Times, I would be packing tonight to go to West Park, New York, to Holy Cross Monastery, where Episcopal monks live. In case you didn't know, the Episcopalians had monks. I would be leading a Making a Difference workshop. I've been leading the workshop for 25 years and have outlived most of the leaders I knew when I took it, except for A.O., who's the head of the Mastery Foundation, and for Jay, who's 90 and quit leaving several years ago. Making a difference changed my life and saved my life. I was out of parish ministry when I took the course, burned to a crisp and considering renouncing my priestly vows. But at the workshop, I came up with the declaration, which is how all workshops end, with the participants declaring who they are. My declaration after four days was, I am priest. Not I am a priest. That was, no, it was that who I am in this world is priest. That's who I be. That's what I live into and out of. My identity. Who I am. I was called to be the rector of St. John's in Waterbury shortly after that workshop and spent 21 wonderful years there. And then partially retired to be the missioner of the Middlesex Area Cluster Ministry shortly after the, my retirement. Mine is not the only life I've seen saved and changed and altered by the workshop. Almost everyone who does it gets their identity made all new and with power to speak it out to the world. I love leading, though I probably won't for too many more years, but I owe the workshop my life as I've lived it for the last 30 years, the life I was meant to have. It mean, makes me sad that I won't be heading to a park tomorrow. We've moved the workshop to next year. I hope that works out. I need to give back some of what I've been given from the Making a Difference workshop. Giving back is how I pay forward for this life I love so much. This is Tuesday, May the 12th, 2020, in all times. Too. In post-pandemic times, I would be at West Park, New York, at Holy Cross Monastery, getting ready for bed, having finished the first day's session of the Making a Difference workshop. What Making a Difference is about is going outside the lines of what's easy and hard, what is important and possible and impossible, to a place where we make a difference beyond those realms. Our lives are run on a scale of important to unimportant. If you're a pastor like me, writing your sermon isn't important on Monday. It becomes very important on Saturday. But if you hear a parishioner is in the hospital on Saturday morning, the sermon becomes less important and the visit to the hospital is what's important. Making a difference isn't on that scale. Making a difference as we draw it, we draw a line on the board 
from important to unimportant. And then way up in the corner, we put a dot and we say, that's making a difference. That's labeled M-A-D. Making a difference is something that comes out of our declaration of who we are in the matter of life. It is important, it is not important or unimportant. It is who we be. It is a powerful and profoundly transforming workshop. I wish I were there helping lead it, loading, leading people to declare who they be in the world and standing on the huge porch of the monastery, watching the mighty Hudson River flow down to New York. I miss that in this strange and utterly different time. This post was Wednesday, May 13th, 2020, and it's called Bird Songs and Too Too Soon. There's so many birds in our yard. I took the dog out at 10 p.m. and they were still singing. Lots of songbirds and a few too many crows. Crows are the smartest birds, I believe. They figure out things you wouldn't think a bird brain could figure out, like stealing shiny objects. One sat on a tree this morning and, a, and stared at me for five minutes. I was feeling a little unsafe when he cawed and flew away. A group of crows is called a murder of crows, not a comforting title. But even crows would be smart enough to know it's too, too soon to be over the country in the face of the pandemic. Staying home and staying safe is working for me. Not enough yet. The problem is the president is ignoring the pleas of public health experts and scientists because he needs a Robust economy is his only chance for re-election. Another problem that the virus is that it takes a couple of weeks to show up. Even though there is enough testing, which in spite of what the president says, there isn't. So states like Georgia and Texas and many others reopening won't know for 14 days or so how much the virus has spread. Then it will be too late to avoid needless death. Joe Biden said the other day that if he were president, he would tell people to believe Dr. Fauci and to listen to the scientists and not to the politicians. Would that he were. Many, many Americans who will die in this are too soon reopening. We should have extended it, extended the shutdown. Bird songs are soothing. Deep, the deep partisan politics of our nation during a national emergency, anything that's soothing. Anxiety and fear fit better for that. Listen to the birds to soothe your heart and soul. Vote in November to end the anxiety and fear you feel. This, is, this post is from Thursday, May 14th, and it's called Normal Times, Part 3. In normal time, since it is 9, 19 p.m., we'd have wrapped up the evening session of making a difference and be going to bed for the transformation of tomorrow. Making a difference is transformational technology, even though my spell word doesn't 
know that transformational word. And that the last moment is when we see people's faces and body language change for the better. It's a remarkable experience to see that and even more remarkable to experience that. We end the, centering per the workshop with Centering Prayer, which has been a part of each day of the workshop all along. And then we go to lunch to eat before we all leave. I miss not being there tomorrow. For my part, I can't overstate what the workshop has meant to me and many others over the years. A new start, a beginning with no something beyond words and deeply felt. All that longing in my heart. But I am more moved by how safe we are here in Cheshire and how no one in the three little rural churches that I know of has the virus and how our children and grandchildren are all safe. These are trying times. Meditation helps. I do centering prayer, just sitting for 20 minutes, longing to be in the presence of God, the God who dwells within me. I also do the Jesus prayer. You inhale and say, Lord Jesus Christ. Then exhale and say in your mind, have mercy on me. Do either and you will be calmed. And there are lots of videos online that are soothing. My friend named Charles sent me one. Try it out. It's, you go to YouTube and type in the log year two. It is a log across a little stream. And for you see how many animals cross that log in the course of a year. It's very soothing. Try it out.